Hear them owls hitting down there, isn't that pretty cool? Oh yeah, I hear them. Let them hear it once. What am I doing here? What's this one doing over here? It's supposed to be over here. Somebody's had this thing. That ain't right. That's right. Better have these, Ted. Mm -hmm. Pretty important today. Only got about a hundred yards before we're there. It's not very far. Let's go down here and check it out. Morning starting off pretty calm. Ted and I came into a different spot today than the one we were at last night after we saw the guy shoot that buck that we were calling to. We decided to get out of there because he was going to go back in there looking for that deer, so we switched gears. Got in here. This is a spot that I hunted some last year. I actually was with Eric Barber in this big oak tree right behind Ted when we had a real nice 10 pointer come into the base of the tree. This is a good cruising spot. It's not a spot where you're going to see a lot of deer, but it links up two big blocks of timber and a bunch of bedding to the east of us. As you all can probably see, there's a road right here like 60 yards away, and it gets quite a bit of traffic. We've already seen one hunter come down the road and go down and past us. Even their duck hunters are blasting in the marsh already, but during the rut, this uh, this spot's real good because several ridges dump down right here, as y'all can tell. And here at the bottom, it's kind of a thermal hub area with several ridges and several bedding areas linked together. So there's always a bunch of scrapes right here. It's an excellent cruising spot. Ted and I didn't see hardly any deer driving in this morning. And last night they were moving like crazy. So hopefully by mid-morning they're up and moving around a little bit. If we don't see much here though, by 9, 9.30, we're gonna pull the stands, go back to the Smurf and regroup, start bouncing around some more, just like we did yesterday. Oh, deer right here running at us. You? Yep. Still coming. It's like a doe and a fawn. Chase potentially. See him?
Had that little buck, a mature doe and two fawns come in. They made it right up here underneath of us, but they sat here forever. And eventually either caught our wind or maybe saw us in the tree. I know that little buck was looking up here every once in a while. But they didn't seem too nervous. They just kind of bounded back up the hill and then he went back to chasing them around. Just completely calm. I mean, not a stitch of wind in the, in the air right now. Since just kind of hanging here around the stand. But it's a good sign. Already saw a buck chasing a doe. Do you want me to say anything else? No, that's good. Ted says that's good. We'll talk to you guys in a little bit when we see more deer. Waiting for these babies to get warm so I can put them in my boots. I feel like we're going to hear a deer coming from like a half mile away. Mm -hmm. He's gonna die right there, Ted. You need to go down right there, buddy. You can't take that. There he goes. Holy oh, crap, that happened. Feel like this is real. I know. <laughs> like it guys, I we're sitting here and I'm we dead. haven't seen anything for like two or three hours. And Ted just says, "Man, I really like to film somebody <laughs> shoot a buck soon." And I'm like, "Well, maybe today is gonna be the day." I kept saying, "I'm like, yes." I could not hear I know, you. I know, because this tree, I was behind this tree. I could I not like, hear you. I was like, Ted, Ted, Ted. Like, we were running out of time. Was he Corrin too? Yes, Hard. but that's yeah. why I put it right through his shoulder. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, another big buck. Hey. Really big one. Right on the road. Hang on. I just look up and there's another nice buck and this thing looks almost identical to the one that I just killed. What just happened, dude? <laughs> I'm shaking bad, dude. I'm shaking so bad. Beautiful 10 pointer too. Yeah, he's not Real so nice buck. <laughs> yes. I told you, man, this is a good spot. Yeah. This is a heck of a spot. Y'all can see that road right there. Ted just filmed a truck drive down it, turn around, come back. 45 minutes ago. Everybody's going into this public and going way back and in there. And you've heard the waterfowl hunters back in the marsh shooting this morning. 
We're just at a cruising spot right here. And it couldn't have worked any better. I better call Greg. Holy cow. He's laying here dead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> big oak tree? Yeah. Uh, well, not the big oak, but a tree 15 yards from it. Heck yeah. It's going to be an easy drag. Yeah, it's going to be a real easy drag. <laughs> I mean, he's 100 yards from the road. Dead. Nice. Have you found him or can you see Oh, him yeah. Like we that? filmed him fall over. Nice. I'll, oh. I'll drive down there. We can throw him in my truck. Okay. Sounds good. All right, congrats. Thanks. Do another one, Ted. <laughs> yeah, I will, hopefully. Oh, <laughs> 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 drag out there. I need to drag out here. All right, see you in a bit. All right, bye. Me and Ted just switched up. It's going to be an hour or so before Jake and Greg get here to help us drag this buck out. And Ted's got a tag in his pocket, so you never know. Might see another one cruising through. Look at this guy, he just leaves his door open. We can steal whatever we wanted. Here comes Greg. Yeah, I see him there. There they are, 75 yards off the road, and they said the buck is somewhere close by. Sounds like it didn't go far. We got a nice, nice easy trail to drag him out right through here. Don't even have to go down through the ditch. It is going to be the easiest track job ever, which after mm -hmm. this season, uh, we're due for one of those. So <laughs> I'm cool with that. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to see this thing. He's literally parking right where those bucks walked across the road. Here comes another vehicle. Driving past them. You guys deer hunting? Mm hmm. Just getting out or? Uh, no, our buddies are up in there right now. They kill something? Mm hmm. Did they? Nice yeah. buck or? I think so, yeah. Really? How about you? Not a deer. You got the well, bike? I saw a bunch, but. You got the bike back there. <laughs> well, we drove, we got a stand all the way in the back by the bridge. Okay. So, got a ways out there. Okay. See the one that was parked on the Hill here this yeah, morning. yeah. Gotcha. Alrighty. Good luck. Yep, you too. No, right over there to your left. Dang. Awesome. But you guys parked like right where they came across the road. <laughs> huh? Did, did you think he was going to get away? Last uh -huh. for a second. Ted <laughs> <laughs> just said and it's so funny. Yeah. Because he's like, man, I'd really like to film somebody shoot another buck. I haven't got to film one since <laughs> Kentucky. <Yeah. laughs> and I'm like, well, today might be the day. Never know. And I went, <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> Pretty sure he was standing right here, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 10 yards from the stand. But it's pretty open up there. I mean, and he would have got us right here when we were getting sky lit up there. But he came basically from your truck to where I'm standing and then tore out of here one up and I can see him laying there right now. <laughs> oh, I see him. Oh my God. <laughs> Get in there, Ted. Look at how dark, yeah, I remember seeing that, like yeah. how dark his legs are. I thought it was mud. Hunting down here in the marsh and they get, they get like that. It's real cold <laughs> about these deer.
What do you think, Jake? I like that. <laughs> <laughs> nice work, boys. <laughs> yeah. Gorgeous deer. That's what you want it to look like. Double lung shot. Drove it down through the shoulder into both lungs and maybe even caught some of the piping coming off the heart. The tree is 50, 60 yards away. Got that one with these Montex 125s. November. Are you out of tags for the year then? <laughs> huh? Are you out of bow tags for the year then? Yeah, I'm out of bow tags. That's got to feel all right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all, they made me mad last year. I messed up a bunch. <laughs> I let a bunch of these things get away, like some really good opportunities at them too. Even out of that same tree, essentially. Out of that same tree, yes. Let one get away right there at that spot. All right, let's see, let's see where that exit came out quick. See that, how far back it came out? Mid body is where it came out on that opposite side. You got everything then, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, got everything. But man, if you've been right there, you know, you might be looking at one lung liver guts at best. I'll tell you, see what I got today. What'd you get? Some National Geographic type stuff. You film some like slow-mo buck chasing doe action? Oh man. <laughs> is it awesome? Yeah. <laughs> oh man. I can't wait to see that. I love those, I love those surprises when you look up like 40 yards away and all of a sudden there's a buck standing there. <laughs> I got one the other night when I was self-filming. I just heard footsteps 35, 40 yards away and you see the rack, you know, coming at you and it's, man, there's no other adrenaline. I like turned that. It's like, as soon as I saw him, I was like, shooter Ted. Yeah. So then how long did it take him to close the rest of the distance? Oh, I mean, not very long. Like he didn't stop, I don't think. Yeah. He was coming. But you can look in here, you see all these ridges dumped down, even that one right over there. All of them dumped down right here into this little bottom. It's like a thermal hub and there's always scrapes right there where you guys walked in at, always fresh rubs. You know, it's just a, a really good rut travel area for bucks because they got one ridge, two ridge, three ridges, four ridges, and then two big ditches that are full of bedding cover that come together right here with the big marsh and swamp on the backside. And the duck hunters were just blasting away in there this morning. Yeah. The tricky thing with this spot though, is that you can only hunt it on a calm wind. Like when you guys pulled in, Ted's dropping milkweed and it's swirling bad. Really? Yep. Just picked up a few miles an hour and that was all it took, huh? Yeah. But it's down here in one of these bottoms, you know, on one of those hubs. And I've been wanting to get in here lately. Just yesterday, wind was too high, but I saw those northerly winds this morning at like one two miles an hour and that was perfect for this spot didn't see much though just mm -mm. doe and two fawns a little buck before him what was the wind doing when he came in had you been checking with milkweed or anything yeah or? it was pretty much dead calm yeah this wasn't going anywhere no it was falling like i don't think he would have got us i think he would have walked right by us you know mm. had i not been up there shuffling around trying to get a shot at him they yeah, just, they're, they're half done when they're yeah. walking and cruising like that. Yeah. They just don't. Well, it was the same thing the other day when I had that one literally walk under the stand. Yeah. I'm up there trying to film and trying to get a shot, and I'm grunting at him seven yards away, and he just marched into the scrape. So, yep. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're on they a mission. They let their guard down. A good reason to ha have a reasonable draw weight that you can just pull straight back like that. Yeah. If and, you're up there, yeah. you know, pulling too much weight and having to make a bunch of movement, you may just And mine is on the edge of being unreasonable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> My draw well, as long as you can still pull it straight back. I mean, that's the point. Yeah. Is if you can pull it straight back slowly when you're cold and you're all bundled up, then you're good to go. But, yeah. but at the same time, you're able to drive through the shoulder like that. Yeah, and that's what that I told weight. Ted. I'm lucky because I got really long arms and the ability to shoot a long draw. Yeah. So with a long draw, you can shoot heavy arrows, heavy heads, and pull off those types of shots. You know, a lot of people will lose a deer if they're shooting yeah. lighter poundage and a lighter arrow or if just a speed bow or something. It'll, and I mean, that's another reason why I switched back to those fixed blades. Yeah. Is because when you encounter bone, you have less odds of a deflection with yeah. them. You can talk about how strong you are too. That also helps. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Definitely not, especially if you watch that hunt that you and I had earlier this fall when I let down on that big thing on the ground. That was the thing, that guy that we talked to last night that, that rattled that buck in that we almost shot. He paddled like two and a half <laughs> yeah. miles to get in there. Yeah. That guy, you said, rode a bike way back there. Yeah, I think that's the coolest thing about this spot is everybody's just driving right by it. It's kind of similar to Zach's Nebraska buck where you can literally see hunters driving by from the tree stand. We say that a lot, but it sh sure seems like you need to use every inch of it if you got a public area mm -hmm. to hunt. A little dark face. That's pretty yeah, he's pretty. Oh! Got him. Shoot him. Shooting the ducks. Arm to the teeth, Ted. Oh, yeah. Gotta have it all. Right when, right when we saw that other buck, I just let one rip. <laughs> did you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> oh, so you're just out here educating him, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> better not let, better not put that in the video because Jurist will, will uh, <laughs> rip on high. you. We love you, Jurist. We love you. Yeah. Right here's where the buck was standing when I spotted him. He stands about 35 yards or so away. You can see his track right there in that scrape. And he turns and he walks straight at the stain. He's coming right through here and you all can see there's this little oak right here in between us and where the deer is standing. And it's got all of its leaves still. And when Ted and I were looking for a tree in the dark, we were expecting the movement to come from this way. So we wanted to have some sort of cover in between us and the oncoming deer and without that tree and all those leaves i don't think i would have been able to get drawn because it was so calm this morning i mean virtually no wind that buck is walking through here facing straight at us and as y'all can tell up in that tree we're pretty open we don't have much cover in the tree itself so we're looking for other cover in and around the tree especially to get drawn back that's the biggest thing and there was just enough leaves in that tree as he's walking through here and then veering right I was able to draw back real, real slow when his head was behind all those leaves and he didn't catch me. Last year we set up in the same spot except we were sitting in that big oak down there and I had a buck walk down the exact same trail except he veered right here and went straight at the base of our tree and ended up with a terrible angle and I couldn't shoot him. So we backed off of it a little ways, tried to get to a point where we had a good 15 yard shot to this trail. 10, 15 yard shot to this trail. It was really a perfect setup this morning and that's one thing that we've been trying to get better at these past few years is really fine tuning your setup for a killing shot opportunity. And this, this buck did exactly what we thought he was gonna do in this situation. And as you've seen here, these last handful of kills or whatever that we've had on the channel, we're killing these deer in the spot that we anticipate them to be before they get there. And when you're setting up like that, you're, you're practice drawing, you are basically playing that scenario in your mind before it happens. It makes it much easier to execute the shot then whenever the buck does show up. Where was the shot at? Instead of, he was coming right at the tree, but he turned and he walked right up through here. This is where he pegged it. And as you can tell, we don't have any more of that cover in between us and the deer at that point. I mean, he's 10 yards. He's right in the kill hole right here. So I had to bend around that dead limb that's coming off that oak tree and shoot him. And Ted had to film from around the back side of the tree. But at this point, that's okay if he busts you because he's, you know, in trouble. <laughs>